During the second episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we meet a mysterious former super soldier named Isaiah, an elderly man living in Baltimore with ties to battles with the Winter Soldier during the 1950s. It's quickly revealed that Isaiah is a super soldier who was working for the US government before being locked away and experimented on for 30 years. Today's video is going to cover the comic book origins of Isaiah Bradley, or as he's better known in the comics, Captain America. Isaiah Bradley's first comic book appearance was Truth, Red, White, and Black number one. However, his whole origin as a hero is told over the entire miniseries. The story begins during the 1941 World's Fair, when they had a designated weekend for African Americans to attend. Isaiah Bradley was at the World's Fair with his newly married wife, Faith Shabazz. However, after experiencing racism, Isaiah got into a fight and the two decided to leave the fair. We next meet a number of men who would become closer to Isaiah in the story after he enters the army. The two most prominent are Maurice Canfield and Sergeant Lucas Evans, both who had recently been the victims of various forms of racial violence. Pearl Harbor happens and Isaiah enlists in the army. Additionally, others find themselves in the service, like Maurice, who enters as part of an arrangement to keep him out of jail for sedition. Meanwhile, Isaiah's wife, Faith, who's pregnant, gives birth to a little girl named Sarah Bradley. Isaiah, now on base, learns about his daughter's birth via letters. But it isn't long before he gets into another fight on base after experiencing racism from other white soldiers. Isaiah's platoon and hundreds of other black soldiers are sent to a special training site where, in front of the group, the commanding officer is killed and it's taken over by two scientists, Colonel Walker Price and Wilfred Nagel. Letters start arriving in the mail to these soldiers' homes, informing their loved ones that they had died in action. Meanwhile, the soldiers are actually being experimented on in an underground facility, being injected with a new strain of the super soldier serum developed from the records of Dr. Erskine that were used to create Captain America, Steve Rogers. A number of soldiers die during these procedures, and the ones who survive, they're somewhat mutated. The remaining men who survive are converted to a covert black ops team. It's also revealed that Isaiah's wife doesn't believe her husband is dead, having opened the coffin he was supposed to be in and finding the burned body of a white man instead. She begins to look for clues as to what happens. Meanwhile, on a covert mission in Portugal, the team find themselves waiting for Steve Rogers to appear. However, Steve ends up being stuck on a mission in the South Pacific. One of Isaiah's teammates, Maurice, learns that his father, upon learning the fake news that his son had died in the war, shot and killed his mother and himself. This enrages Maurice, and he ends up fighting the platoon members. Maurice and Sergeant Evans are killed, and Isaiah and another teammate are severely injured. Toward the end of the issue, Isaiah steals a copy of Captain America's costume and goes into Germany. Isaiah infiltrates a Nazi death camp, where a German Dr. Koch is experimenting on Jews and people of color, attempting to turn them into weapons using, you guessed it, another super soldier serum, among other methods. Isaiah blasts his way through the camp and destroys most of it. However, he's captured when he accidentally gets locked in a gas chamber with multiple Jewish people. The gas is turned on and everyone in the chamber dies except for Isaiah, who's rendered unconscious and is captured. When Isaiah awakes, he's in the presence and custody of Adolf Hitler himself. Hitler offers him a deal and tells him that the Nazis don't have any problems with black people, which is ridiculous, and offers him a pardon if he works with the Nazis. However, secretly, in German, Hitler discusses taking his blood, mutilating him, and giving him back to the US Army as a message. The Nazis have Isaiah transported via a convoy to a death camp, but the convoy is actually attacked and Isaiah is freed. Kinda. You see, stealing Cap's uniform it was a really big deal, and Isaiah was court-martialed for this. Far into the future, Steve Rogers is investigating the information that he's learned about this other super soldier he was unaware of. He learns from Isaiah's wife that he was incarcerated for 17 years before President Eisenhower pardoned him. Steve is able to track down Isaiah and his wife, and he gives him back the costume that he stole earlier, telling him he wishes he could erase the legacy of corruption related to Isaiah's service. The two take a picture where Isaiah is wearing the tattered remains of his old uniform. And we also learn that Isaiah has become a true legend in the black community as one of the first successful super soldiers in the second Captain America. Now, additionally, in the first episode, you see that Isaiah has a grandson, a young man named Eli Bradley. 
Eli is one of the founding members of the Young Avengers, a group that I've discussed a lot in my Wiccan and Speed video. Eli was known as Patriot and told the group that he was also a super soldier due to his grandfather passing down his genes to him. However, it was revealed that Eli was lying. He was actually taking a rare mutagenic growth hormone designed to give powers to people without powers. It worked, and the drug gave him powers, but they were temporary, and in turn, Eli had begun abusing the drug. However, Eli does become a true super soldier when he's gravely injured in battle, and he ends up going through a blood transfusion with his grandfather. And that is about it for the comic book history of Isaiah Bradley. The character is one that hasn't been used a lot throughout comic book history, but it's super interesting for the development of his grandson within the MCU. I hope you learned a lot from this video, and it helps shape your understanding of the character and his legacy, as within Marvel Comics, he's kind of viewed as a legend. Thank you for watching, and if you learned a lot, please like the video and leave a comment below telling us what you think of Isaiah's legacy in the comics. This has been Nick with Key Issues, and remember the motto, Captain America over everything.